Hello friends, welcome back to product and brand management. We were discussing product decisions, decision making in relation to product management and we broadly divided this aspect into two major parts, product mix level decisions and product line level decisions. So, we are looking at the levels that means the point of concern for decision making and on the other side we are uh, looking at these aspects as a broader criteria also. So, going ahead with we will uh, discuss product mixed level product mix level decisions last time. Now, we would be moving towards product line based decisions and let us see what do we have in store. When you say product line level decisions, we must focus with uh, you know with a perspective of strategies and I have already talked about that wherein we are thinking in terms of long term, path, time and those aspects which we discussed uh, in couple of last sessions. So, product line level strategies you know are related to when a company you know objectives influence product line and length and you see they are related to expanding product line. Although in general you would realize that this should be a major objective for almost all the companies expansion of product lines, but no it is not the case. Many a times many products in singularity that is a, a particular kind of a product in its core form is liked so much that a company keeps on selling it for number of years with little alterations definitely depending upon the kind of technological advancements which uh, keep on taking place because the customer wants so and that product keeps on selling the same way becoming a customer's favorite and number of customers keep on adding to it and so on. And then you would not find so many other variants to that product in, in that particular line. So, that is why though it sounds like a universal objective it is not like that and also it depends upon how satisfied the organization is in terms of keeping up one form of the product for large uh, levels longer years and then for a suitable profitability which they are happy with. Then comes in the other objective modifying a product line that also depends upon several factors, but here apart from customer desire competition changing technology those kind of elements are stronger and I will be talking about these you know in a uh, little elaborate form later on. Then there is another element wherein you know reduction or exit of a product should I say reduction in product line or sometimes exiting the complete product line is also one of the aspects seen as objectives. So, keep this in mind and let us look further how things would be. You see there is an element of line stretching while keeping those objectives in mind let us look at line stretching wherein it is related to expansion and many a times is a resultant of initial modification which leads to expansion. So, line stretching occurs when a company lengthens its product line beyond its current range. As I said it depends upon customer competition environment, but if you will look into the history of and I was mentioning about this if you will look into the history of several organizations wherein the desire of the market leadership or product managers is a very important factor in terms of line stretching, how far they would like to take it up. 
I uh, remember few decades back automotive companies they did not believe much in line stretching although many people say that line stretching enhances the product life cycle span of products in due course of time. The uh, you know added on products or variants they add on the life uh, of the existing products and many organizations if they do not do that their products they go for decline in due course of time. But then there are several other factors which actually support that dip and there is always a chance of rejuvenation which companies may not try or try depending upon for example, we have talked about several you know Joss polymers and field and Java and these kind of products earlier as well. For example, I remember uh, a car very you know wonderful product and, and uh, you will still find that car running as taxis in many cities uh, especially uh, I remember Kolkata you have a large number of ambassador cars as taxi and uh, you see that was a wonderful car, but somehow and, and they came up with variants mark 1, mark 2, mark 3 kind of variants were there. But they did not go for much of a line stretching although later on they collaborated with Isuzu Motors to come up with Contessa and then they went for some other variants and so on. But, but somehow within the sphere of you know uh, that span wherein ambassador was growing line stretching was not done and that was the case with many many other manufacturers you see there 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 was uh, a scooter earlier then the, there were some bajaj products and bajaj scooter was one of the most you know accepted product in this country so uh, i i uh, would not prefer to say that uh, it was a faulty decision or this should have been taken as I would prefer to say that it, it is the desire of the leadership, customer response, competition and so many things which come to fore in terms of as far as these kind of decisions go. So, you see the company can stretch its line up market or let us say for a larger market. Uh, I personally do not prefer saying down market, uh, but, but it is in reference to line. So, it can be talked about as up or down basically or you may if, if, if you want to take it up you know in terms of uh, other direction. So, you, you may choose to call it anyway whatever you wish to, but because we are talking in terms of product width and product line that is why up and down. So, or both ways that can also be you know a method of as far as stretching goes. So, up market stretch is when companies may wish to enter the high end of the market for more growth, higher margins or simply to position themselves, themselves as full line manufacturers. Depending upon what they are seeing in terms of the potential of that particular line and you see here keep this word potential in mind. I have talked about this earlier as well because potential is an analyzed perspective wherein so many factors tell, tell a brand manager or, or product and brand manager and especially a product manager that how far this product can go and how far this line can go in terms of uh, different variations. And when I say how far definitely repeated purchase or add on customers and so on. Now, there are several examples. There is a product, a wonderful car by Toyota called Lexus. Nissan's Infiniti is there, again a very good car. Honda's Acura and, and these are specific models, but, but there are other wonderful models by these manufacturers, you know, uh, world class models. Now, you see, you see uh, note that they invented entirely new names rather than using or including their own names when, when you know they projected although we know that Lexus is Toyota Lexus, but, but they focused upon Lexus being Lexus actually. Because consumers may have implied or suggested so 
during reflexive primary research which they would have done. You see, when you go to uh, a prospective customer, you target that customer, you ask him that would you like to have this kind of a car? This is the prospective, you know, feature, these are the prospective features, this is the prospective price, this is how this is going to be. So, so you try and talk with the customers in a reflexive mode, that is wherein you communicate in such a fashion that you are part of the complete communication and you are not uh, doing research as an outsider actually. Now, once you uh, talk to the customer this way, then many of the customers would suggest many things and they might suggest that a name should be unique, uniquely you know uh, allocated or given to uh, a unique name should be given to this product because customer wants to carry a different kind of an image in his mind or let us say uh, in the minds of his peer group and so on. You see we are living in a brand driven world. It is a mesmerizing world of brands. I will be talking about this uh, you know uh, a couple of uh, sessions after uh, today. But again uh, you know uh, having experienced so much in terms of brands and experiencing all through in terms of brands, we understand very well how name matters to us. Other companies have included their own name in moving up market. For example, General Electric introduced the G profile brand for its large appliance offerings as well. Why? Again the same reason. They would have gone for you know talking to their customers and customers would have deciphered that in front of them. You see ultimately we are dependent upon the inputs, the reflexive suggestions, reflexive, reflexivity based suggestions with all the stakeholders of our value chain. So, let us see you know a market stretch towards lower prices technically you may say down market uh, you know stretching, but usually it is a price based stretching. There you have larger consideration of developing a product for a different kind of a target who definitely has a larger buying capacity or wishes to pay for that, but then you have several other things in your mind. You have features, you have add-ons, you have pro, you know potential of the product. You have you have so much, but here you you have uh, you know price as the prime factor. So primarily that becomes the reason because you want to go for a larger customer base, wherein people would like to buy in larger numbers also. So probably uh, you are reducing the price customer has a larger buying capacity, but then the customer would be buying that product in larger numbers possibly. So, you see company may want to introduce a lower price line for any of the three reasons. The company may notice strong growth opportunities as mass retailers like Walmart. So, why not to take it to masses and the philosophy is different basically that no specific person is thought of in terms of you know the sales. It is open for all, one and all. Now that is the particular philosophy and there are several, several products. This is a large retail chain, we all know about it. So, so Ikea Furnitures, they have definitely been focusing on this kind of a thought process and I am not saying Ikea, uh, Ikea Furnitures, they uh, just lower the prices while they compromise on anything else. They do not compromise anything uh, on anything else because many a times while thinking in terms of mass market and lower prices, uh, the manufacturers they standardize their manufacturing process and they go for mass production actually. So, it should not be correlated with that kind of a thing and remember the discussion we have had on production line and product line. So, it is, it is not always that you are reducing something from the product because by the time you have decided to go for uh, you know a low uh, price market stretching or uh, you know, product line stretching, by that time your base product has already become 
an augmented product and it is now taken as a base product that means the expectations have risen high. Then other aspect is that company may wish to meet the competition who might otherwise try to move up market. That means if they are coming upside, they are bringing the variants which you know they are enjoying a particular kind of a brand image, resonance, equity. Remember these three, three, four words, we will be talking about this later on, but they are enjoying that, they are enjoying a strength in the market. Now they are thinking in terms of moving up. So it is better you move slightly down. And you see, Mercedes introduced A class, not so uh, you know, low priced, but definitely lower priced as compared to other models of Mercedes. And you know, when when Toyota and other car manufacturers, they started entering into the similar sphere which they were enjoying for you know a longer time. And definitely Lexus gave a good competition to their those kind of variants. A company faces a number of naming choices during this strategy. You see, they use the parent brand name on all of its offerings and introduce lower priced offerings using a sub brand name also. And Procter & Gamble is one of the, uh, those examples. Maruti Suzuki has several such examples and several other manufacturers, you know, they make that brand name very, very specifically prominent. Many a times it is supportive of the fact that they, you know, strongly, uh, you know, emphasize their presence in a larger market and capture whole of the scenario. All depends how do you strategize, we will be talking about this continuously in due course of time. And uh, as I as I said that you see uh, and, and we, have, we have seen a uh, few elements of how to think strategically when we talked about analysis part. So remember that lesson also. Now you see introduce the lower priced offerings under a different name that is also one of the reasons when we talk of downwards stretching. Then two way stretching. You see, when once we have talked about up and down, we, there are examples uh, who have chosen to go for both ways simultaneously. Depends upon the capacity, depends upon the you know capability, financial capability, depends upon the confidence and the customer response, and depends upon how well customer is ready, ready to accept that. So, companies serving the middle market might decide to stretch their line in both the directions. Toyota has a two-way stretch of its product line, many, many times they have done this successfully. Alongside its mid-range Corolla model, it added the Camry to serve the upper end of the car market and the Vios to serve the compact car market. It also introduced the Lexus as a premium offering for the luxury car segment, Isuzu has done this several times and, and so on. So there is a whole range of, depends upon you know. Uh, what is the initial response of the customer towards the products or how persistent the company has been in terms of establishing their roots in terms of uh, the product. One more important thing which you should remember is that if company enjoys a strong positioning and they are going for a consistent growth for a longer time in terms of one or two or few of their products, then these steps are much feasible for the organization. Line filling is again a very important concept. A product line can also be lengthened by adding more items within the present range. How is it different with uh, you know stretch? The point is stretch you take that way or this way. Here you know that something else can be brought in here. Now that something else is not much different than the product which you are actually producing probably in for example choosing again the automotive sector they might be using the same platform, they might be using the same engine but they would have a slightly different product or many a times very different product and, and refrigerators, air conditioning, electronics you know you, you may have several examples on. Uh, depending upon what kind of a flexible production systems you have and I have talked about it several times. So you see uh, that is where 
A product line can also be lengthened by adding more items within the present range. Reasons? Reaching for incremental profits. Trying to satisfy dealers who complain about lost sales because of missing items in the line. They always say that you know uh, competitors are doing uh, better than us because they have larger number of variants within the same range. Trying to utilize excess capacity. You have idle capacity and, and the same product would not be accepted more the, the you know there is a maturity level in terms of that product. So, definitely you have to think in terms of variation and customer also wants some difference some difference customer wants the same paratha with a different kind of a, a taste for example, same pizza, but slightly different. Now, that you see that, that uh, slightly will will explain you what I am talking about and then when we talk of automotives and these kind of things. So, definitely there is a huge logic to that wherein uh, the organization is trying to be leading full line company. They want to encompass almost everything they want people to say and their competition to acknowledge that they have all the answers, they have all the products. Trying to plug holes to keep out competition, competition foreseen or, or unforeseen and we have talked about this in competitors analysis, uh, remember that lesson you know when we talked about this last. Examples are there, Kinder chocolate products in the market such as Kinder milk chocolate, Kinder dillies, Kinder chocolate eggs and Kinder happy hippo and so many. And whenever I uh, tell you about the examples, my intent is that you add on to these examples. You see keep uh, this habit or generate this habit of adding on uh, the insight developed and the examples which are being discussed because I wish for you to start observing all around in terms of whatever we are discussing here. Then comes in line modification and pruning. Product line modifications are related to an alteration to an existing product new and different varieties in colors, styles, features, sizes. Microprocessor companies such as Intel and software companies such as Microsoft continually introduce more advanced versions of their products. One of my favorite example is Office 365. Product line pruning is wherein a few items can be deleted due to following reasons or exited because of following reasons that is stagnation, obsolescence in terms of technology, uh, loss of appeal that means you did not add the technological features at the time when you should have. So, that is what obsolescence means loss of appeal customer does not want it, customer likes it, but um, you want something different. Changes in company objectives leadership wants something else. Leadership wants their you know brand to be known with x plus y plus z kind of a perspective, not just what they have been. You see IBM from a hardware company became a solutions company and then they have a wonderful tagline just visit their website. A replacement with new products is the call lack of profits is there which is a very, very considerably strong kind of uh, a reason. Conflict with other products in the line, Google Play Music has been replaced with YouTube Music and Google Podcast and some other examples, these are general life examples. Now decisions about the intangible oblique augmented product. Customers usually seek more from a product than the performance of some specific tangible function. Customer actually always wants more and that is why we are studying product and brand management. Otherwise, it would not have been a requirement if customer would have been satisfied on the basic product, every product would have been basic. So, remember this you see customer as a customer our desires are ever growing and that is the zest of a marketer to satisfy those desires. As far as the product variable is concerned, the key characteristics external to the physical product are branding, I have mentioned about it, packaging, 
decisions based on its functions and its appearance. I have talked about it at length, so just visit that uh, video. Product services, decisions based on value they add. Now, value they add in terms of product performance enhancing services. When uh, software companies they started coming in, so they started training institutions. Now, that was wherein they wanted their product to become a mass product. So, they wanted that their software should also become the reason for livelihood generation, employment. Microsoft certified programmer, now do you remember something? So, that is where you know and then these are just examples, there are several other modes to enhance the performance of the product through uh, different kinds of uh, support services. Product life prolonging services, wherein upgradations of the products and many a times uh, you know suggesting different kinds of usage with different kinds of add-ons, many a times you know putting up specific equipment within the product to enhance its life. Product risk reducing services, there are many many and uh, you know uh, we have several examples on that and uh, for this section which I have been discussing for uh, you know uh, almost 20-25 minutes now. So, please refer to the source mentioned in the slides and, and uh, you know this is a paper, uh, no this is a book. Uh, in 2006, product and services management. So, uh, refer to this and you will find lots of wealth of uh, you know uh, wisdom here. Then there are other ways of products you know in terms of strategizing. Product proliferation and, and you see uh, once we discuss terms and terminologies, we talked about concepts. Here we are again sort of mentioning different terms, but these are largely strategies actually. So, this can connote with being a terminology, but these are strategy that means these are implementation action based uh, kind of elements. So, product proliferation wherein for example, Honda, Procter and Gamble, Honda on entering the European motorcycle market offered an enormous wide range of engine sizes. In you know full force they went with different kinds of models because Europeans like that and as I said customer is at the heart of decision. Procter and Gamble when launching their disposable nappy, Procter, they offered a wide range of sizes and gender specific products. Then there is another strategy in terms of value, value itself is a proposition throughout the value chain you have to find value generating points and you have to implement that, that is why value itself is called you know is, is referred to being a strategy. For example, BMW offers a high quality product with emphasis on reliability, it is not the most expensive and they emphasize on value for money, although it is not so low price as well. Now, similarly Toyota uses the same product strategy in different market segments. Then comes in design as a strategy, I will be focusing upon design and design thinking at length in one of the sessions. So, you see design relates especially here we are talking of outward appearance, Sony and Apple emphasize good design in all their products. I know many of you are Apple fans. And you know uh, they focus on frequently pioneering unique styles and offering elegance and easy to use products. Last two, one is innovation which itself is big and it is a longitudinal process. I will be talking about innovation insights and design thinking later, later on and there you would realize that it is not simple. You see firms like 3M they are known for innovation. 3M and you know more recently Merck and Philips have developed reputations for product innovation, they have positioned themselves like that. 
Philips has a campaign on innovation and you. And that's a beautiful campaign, just watch it on YouTube. So this is based on a strong technology culture as well. So how organization is nurturing internal technological culture? Now, you see, this is distinct from design in that while the product may incorporate a new outward appearance, it is the use of new technology that is the focus of the strategy in innovation. Many a times process, many a times development of the product as such. And last part of it, service. American Express, Tesco, both American Express and Tesco continue to be at the forefront of service development. Historically, American Express pioneered many service offerings. More recently, Tesco UK retail grocer compete, Tesco is a grocer, compete by continually offering new and improved services to their customers. Their competitors always seem to be trying to catch up as it seems. It is not that they are not catching up, but you know, they, they uh, are following them many a times, you know, many of their competitors. Meaning thereby, these are few of the examples. There are several such examples which exemplify on services with a strategic perspective to be used as a strategy. And innovation and design are one of my favorite strategies. So just keep these in mind. Now onwards, start looking at innovation and design with a perspective of, you know, uh, implemented, being implemented as strategies to carry forward the product through and through for a longer growth in its product life cycle. I will be catching up with you in my next session on again a complementing but definitely a different kind of a subject. Till then, goodbye.